18 years ago. The conclusion of the original six Joker's Card saga was unleashed into the world. Still to this day considered one of ICP's darkest and most wicked albums, Hell's Pit came out the gate with a vengeance. I had just graduated from high school when it was released and facing the real world for the first time. I had already faced my first major rejection, and the college I was attending just wasn't doing it for me, so I was on the verge of dropping out. Even though the subject matter of the album was very dark, the themes throughout of mental illness, depression, and feeling lonely were comforting to me and helped keep me strong in my own battle with a mental illness I wasn't even aware of having yet at that point in time. On top of the dark themes, there was also some excellent storytelling in the album, on songs such as Every Day I Die, The Witch, and In My Room, which even today is one of ICP's most popular songs thanks to TikTok. In today's vlog, join me as I look back on this album and tie it into my own personal journey through Hell's Wow, what an introduction, huh? Got a new logo, thank you Emily Love for that. And voiceovers, graphics, transition effects. Man, I'm starting to get this whole uh, YouTube thing down a little bit, huh? Yeah. So, as I said in the intro, this vlog here is about the six Jokers card of the first deck. Actually, the second part of the Six Jokers card, The Wraith, Hell's Pit. And like I said in the vlog, it came out the first Jokers card that dropped when I was a uh, legal adult. And really my first taste of the real world as this album came out. So, really um, interesting time to listen to this album for the first time back in those days. And Hell's Pit seemed appropriate because life seemed like hell at the time. I mean, not really. Things would get worse when I thought they couldn't, because, you know, when you're 18, you just don't know a whole lot, at least in my experience. But um, I'm just going to dive into this album, kind of go over my thoughts on each track, kind of reflect back on how I felt then. And um, if you really want an in-depth analysis of this album, I really recommend subscribing to um, MC Lars and MC Snacks. That's um, S-N-A-X. Uh, they have a series called Hatchet Chat, where they kind of go over all the Joker's cards, like in depth, like track by track. They give, um, you know, kind of philosophical takes on each song, uh, trivia, like um, kind of facts. Like I, I've even been schooled, and I've been, you know, a juggalo since like 1999, and they've even schooled me on some things on that Hatchet Chat. So shout out to MC Lars, shout out to MC Snacks, definitely check them out. Uh, but this is my take on Hell's Pit and how it tied into my personal journey through what I felt was my own personal Hell's Pit as a young Davy, first coming out into the world on his own. So, a little, like I said, the overview came out when I first became an adult and just a very, very dark album, probably the darkest album and subject matter that ICP's had, like, ever. Uh, they're doing a Bloody Sunday show um, before Hallow Wicked. Unfortunately, I won't be able to come. The tickets are sold out. Um, and plus, I'm, like, trying to save money for a lot of different things right now, so I'm kind of, like, making some sacrifices. Um, I'll be at the Halloween party, but not the Bloody Sunday or Hallow Wicked show, unfortunately, this year. Uh, but still got to put on for the pals. Pal, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that Bloody Sunday show, they're... Uh, billing it is, you know, the most uh, horrific music they've made, and I guarantee um, a lot of songs will be from this album here, Hell's Pit, because, whew, man, they really dug deep into some dark headspace for some of these songs. And that's why I relate to it so much. It's weird, because back when I first came out, I didn't know that I had um, borderline personality disorder. Like, I knew something, like, wasn't ro like wasn't all there with me, you know, like the way I'd react to things, the way I'd feel about things. Um, but I'll get into that as I analyze each track here. Um, I did write some notes, so if you see me looking down, yes, I'm cheating. I'm looking at my notes as I go over this. Couldn't memorize everything. 
Uh, but we're going to start with the intro and walk into the darkness, kind of um, two in one, because there's not much to the intro really, you know, there's just, um, you hear this maniacal laughter, um, hospital machinery, um, some back masking of, um, I don't even know what they say, I'm sure, I think on the MC Lars and MC Snacks they kind of go over what all the back masked uh, messages are. You hear flames, and finally you hear someone, like, die. You hear the beep, 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 and then, like, all hell literally breaks loose. You hear, like, all the screaming and laughing, and then you hear Violent J, or it might be Shaggy, or it might be both, saying, Welcome to hell. Why did you choose this? And just really sets the mood for the whole album, because it goes right into, um, Walk into the Darkness. And Walk Into the Darkness is a stark contrast <laughs> to Walk Into the Light from the Wraith Shangri-La. Like, I always listen to Walk Into the Light, like when I was going to the gathering this year, like Walk Into the Light was the song I was playing as I was pulling into the gate. Because it really, like, gives you that warm, fuzzy, you know, family love feeling. And Walk Into the Darkness is pretty much just saying, you're fucked. Like, like you're um, in for an eternal life of pain and torture and torment and you know usually Jay and Shaggy on their albums they kind of like portray some kind of good person like when they rap about killing it's usually about bigots or you know people who beat on their wives their children uh, people who are greedy uh, this they're just horrible people throughout the whole album like there's really nothing glamorous at all about Hell's Pit and I think that's just kind of show like if you're this kind of person you're going to hell. <laughs> like that's that's pretty much the message of this album. Um, well, it was also dives really deep into some mental health issues, which I really appreciate now looking back on it. But yeah, they also mentioned the witch on this song for the first time, and the witch is the devil. But I also see the witch from my own interpretation, how I take songs and kind of, you know, make them relatable for my own. Um, mind and my own struggles or you know just my own life I see the witch as mental illness like as a physical manifestation of it so and I'll get into that when I get to the song called the witch uh, but after walking to the darkness it goes into suicide hotline which right off the bat just a hard hitter like the, the beat goes hard um, Shaggy is the hotline operator. I, mean, I know that's kind of a well-known fact now, but I find that funny now because of the meme that recently came out of um, Shaggy Too Dope without the paint on wearing the glasses. Um, I'll probably put it up on the screen just for you to look at. This, this is the face I'm always going to imagine now as the hotline operator when I hear this song. You know, just the, your pain is my pain and I feel your pain. Like, I'm just going to see this face when I hear that voice. <laughs> and like I said, I love the beat to this song. It just, it goes hard. Uh, there's a part on the second or third verse where like everything drops with the synth line. It's Violent J's rapping and like it just, like it, it still like touches me like whenever I hear it like emotionally because a lot of stuff he talks about, anybody who suffered from like depression, bipolar, uh, BPD, like any kind of mental illness, like they can relate to a lot of what he says in this song. You know, it's, it's about wanting to die, it's about wanting to kill yourself and why you, how you see no point in living anymore. Um, it turns out at the end of the song he was just kind of fucking with the guy the whole time because, um, you know, he gets another call from his girl and her friend, he's like, come on by, bring some blunts, you know, but that's just that ICP humor that we've all come to know and love. Um, also, this is the first song where he mentions the shine. He says, I'm like a crushed light bulb, all, all out of shine. And the shine is something that's, you know, your purity, your, um, your morality, you know, what makes you a good person. And when you lose your shine, Hell's Pit is your destination, is the message I get from this. So don't lose that shine, because it makes you who you are. I lost my shine for a while, and I'm glad that I have it back again. Alright, then after Suicide Hotline, we go right into um, Night of the 44, I think. Oh no, we go to the CPKs, which, right off the bat, 
you can tell this song was inspired by some old school Esham. The beat sounds like an old school Esham song. The sampling sounds like something straight out of like Judgment Day. Um, you can just tell that Esham had his hands all over this album, especially with this song. Um, it's a bold statement. They made a song about killing preachers right after they did the unveiling on Shangri-La where they said the carnival is God. I think they really wanted to like make it clear that they're not becoming like a Christian rap band or anything like that. They're still going to bring that old wicked shit that we all love. And they still follow God at the same time, which hey, that sounds good to me. Um, but yeah, there's great back and forth between Jay and Shaggy on this song, kind of like that tag team rap style. Um, didn't, didn't really like connect with it like emotionally, like from my own personal struggles. It's just a fun song to listen to. And it has that great sample at the end, which you're going to hear at the end of this video, that hell is a real place. Hell, 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 hell. Like, I love that sampling at the end. And they do that a lot in the album. Like, kind of like, like DJ Scratch samples with the word hell. That it just makes it sound fresh. Um, CPKs goes right into the song Truly Alone, which is another fantastic story, like a storytelling song by Violent J. Um... The first half of it really, like, just once again tackles that hopeless feeling of being mentally ill and just, like, feeling that there's no hope for you, just, um, just no matter what, you're going to be alone. And then it goes into, um, you know, him going on a murder spree, like, <laughs> like every other song on this album. But, hey, murder sprees are fun. I'm not going to complain. Yeah, this is classic Violent J storytelling. And if you haven't heard this album, give it a listen. Um, you might be repulsed by what you hear, but I'm telling you, these guys, they have good intentions. <laughs> uh, Truly Alone goes into, like, one of my favorite storytelling songs of the album called Every Day I Die. And it's just about how every day in hell you die in some horrific way, and then you got to start all over again and, and just die over and over again. And it's got that sample you heard at the beginning of the video, that hell, 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 in hell, in hell, in hell, 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 like, just once again, great, like, sampling there, like, scratching, and I love it. It just paints a picture of life in hell. <laughs> um, and that, where um, Shaggy talks about the witch is riding my chest with its claws on my neck, saying I should have confessed, there's like this vocal effect in the background, like this really evil sounding voice saying shoulda confessed that like still like like sends chills down my spine when I hear it especially with like earbuds on in a dark room really sets the mood for like like if you're in the mood for like some good horror on audio this is a great album for that now we're getting into Night of the 44 which is a sequel to Night of the X from Carnival of Carnage and then of course we got Night of the Chainsaw and then also um, Night of Red Rum so there's a lot of these Night Of songs that are just insanity. Uh, just once again, big murder spree from a crazy killer clown. And just awesome storytelling from Jay, once again. Like, I'd say um, out of all of ICP's albums, Hell's Pit definitely has the best storytelling of any of them. And that's saying a lot because Violent J is one of the greatest storytellers in rap of all time. And I'm saying that with a straight face. Like he, like he said before that he's been influenced by Ice Cube, and you can tell because, man, the way he can tell a story on Rhyme is just unmatched by a lot of people. After Night of the 44, we get The Witch, which I have a lot to say about this because it's one of my favorite songs on Hell's Pit. You know, something is standing in between me and my sanity. They say my witch is just a dream, morbid fantasy. Like, Really, like, I felt that way for a long time. Like, everybody thought I was crazy. But I found out that, like, these thoughts in my head that I knew weren't my thoughts, but somehow, like, invaded my mind. Um, like, the panic attacks I would feel where I would just freeze up in bed or even in public and just, like, like had to, like, stop and catch my breath because of, like, this feeling of pure terror out of nowhere. It's the witch. It's... Uh, BPD, it's depression, it's bipolar, whatever uh, you want to call it. It's mental illness in the physical form, the witch, is how I've always interpreted this. But before I was diagnosed with BPD, 
Like I, like I really would call these thoughts the witch because of this song. Like there's a line that really stands out to me that Violent J says. It's, um, the witch told me my girlfriend was a demon and all this fallen in love shit I'm dreaming because one of the biggest traits of BPD, like this is textbook BPD right here, is called splitting. And splitting is when you catch feelings for someone um, it, it seems to be random how it happens, like in my experience. Like, I never set out like to catch feelings for people, like it's just my mind just goes, that's the person. And for weeks, months, sometimes years, they are the greatest thing to walk God's green earth. Like nothing, nothing they do is wrong. Like the sun literally shines out their ass. <laughs> and... It's called idealizing. Like, it's very toxic. It's very unhealthy. It sets impossible expectations for people. And it's something that I've worked on for years now to, like, get control of. And I'm finally, like, at that point where I can recognize when, hey, you're idealizing this person. You need to, like, bring yourself back to reality. Because on the other end of that is devaluing, which is, um, <laughs> it could be set off, triggered by anything, um, just the way they um, might not use um, the right punctuation in a text, for instance, or if they don't respond to you for a long time, or the worst, if they leave you unread and then ignore you. Like, see, like, even I get a little worked up still thinking about it just from how I felt in the past, but once again, I've taught myself you've got to, like, bring yourself to reality and, you know, rationalize some of these things. Like, sometimes people just forget to respond, or they're, they get busy, or, um, you know, they just have things going on where they can't get to you right away. But with BPD, unfortunately, a lot of times, like, you get this devaluing where you're just like, fuck that person. They're the worst. <laughs> like, after, like, saying that they were the greatest thing on earth, just a snap of a finger, you can turn on them instantly. And it sucks. Um, sometimes it's justified, but most of the times it's not. So that, yeah, the witch told me my girlfriend was a demon and all this fallen in love shit I'm dreaming. Like, that's really thoughts that'll come in your head. Like, you'll start to question your entire reality, um, especially when it comes to, like, romantic feelings. Like, like am I being played? Can I trust this person? Like, like, what are they trying to get from me? Like, it's it's a whole spiral, and if if you let it, like, you will go insane. Um, like overthinking things, which, like I said, thankfully I'm like finally like getting, or I've gotten a better grasp of when to recognize when these things are happening, so I can put a stop to them. Um, another line that stood out to me, another Violent J line is. The witch jumped on me again, here we go. Laying in my bed, I can't breathe anymore. Laying in my bed, I can't move anymore. There's a demon flying, or floating in my face, clamping my jaw. Sleep paralysis, right? Like, I don't know how many people have experienced that. Um, even without the demon floating in your face, clamping your jaw, like, I've been in bed and just suddenly, like, froze. I can't breathe, can't move, like, just complete feel, feeling of terror. Um, there actually was a recent song on Yum Yum Bedlam called Panic Attack where Shaggy kind of describes um, if you're standing on a railroad track, you look to your left and you see a train about to hit you, like that feeling like takes over your body, like it's the same thing, even if there's no train, you just have that feeling for some reason and you're like just frozen in terror. And I'm sure a lot of people have experienced that too. Like, I guess if you suffer from mental illness, this is a really interesting album to listen to because it's like great creative ways of portraying like these thoughts and feelings that we go through uh, when we suffer from mental illness. So The Witch, great song. Excellent song from ICP on this album. One of my favorite ICP songs ever made, to be honest. After The Witch, we get Bowling Balls. <laughs> Which is just a classic, um, humorous take on a ridiculous concept. More storytelling by Jay about collecting people's heads like bowling balls. 
Um, that's really all I have to say about the song. What I want to talk about is the movie that was included with the CD back in the day when it came out. You could watch this movie in 3D or 2D called Bowling Balls, and it was like a full like 20-30 minute like B-horror movie film based on the song. And they also had like the music video interspersed with it. But it's awesome! <laughs> like I'd watch it with my friends all the time and we would just laugh like hysterically at this movie. Like it's, the, the acting is so terrible, but you know, it's, like what do you expect? Like the budget was probably like $50 for this movie, like the effects are horrible. The acting's like just so bad, but it's just a fun watch. And there's a line that my friends and I used to quote all the time, and it's every time Shaggy would kill someone, Jay would say, Mom's gonna kill us! Gonna fall! You son of a fuck! So, so just good memories with that, uh, with that song and that movie with my friends. <laughs> um, after Bowling Balls is 24, and I haven't heard anybody else like think of this idea like I did but the song is about like there's one beat for Jay about like the horrible things he does in the nighttime like you know murdering things like that and then the beat switches up to sound a little more upbeat and it's Shaggy rapping about like just the chaos and crime and um, just straight up robbing and murdering people during the day but when I hear this song I always think of like a Super Nintendo game like for Jay's verse, like that's one level, like you play as Jay, like kind of creeping around at night, you know, murdering people. And then when the beat switches up, it's the Shaggy Too Dope level uh, during the daytime. Like I, I picture like a beat em up style game, where, you know, like um, Final Fight or something like that, or a River City Ransom, where you just <laughs> and Shaggy just punching like cops and innocent bystanders, stealing their money and killing them. Like, it's just um, a fun vigil I have in my head when I hear 24. And then we go right into Burning Up, which I don't have a whole lot to say about the song, just it's another example of top-notch storytelling on the album about all the different people that go to hell. You know, racist rednecks, people who beat their wife and kids, uh, greedy, uh, rich people, judges, um, just a whole bunch of different people and just the horrible tortures they have to face while in hell. And it's a beat you can dance to. So, it's a great song, Burning Up. Well, another, there's not really no skippable tracks on this album. Um, Sedatives is the next song, one of my favorite beats on the album, about life in a mental asylum where you do these horrible, deranged things to get your fix of sedatives. Uh, you know, just to feel good. Who can't relate to that, right? <laughs> And of course, after Sedatives, probably one of ICP's most popular songs ever made, um, I think mostly due to TikTok in recent days, In My Room. Now, I absolutely love this song. Um, like I said before, like this solidifies Violent J as one of the greatest storytellers in hip-hop. Straight up wicked shit, man. Like, it starts off you know, about this ghost tapping on his window every night. He hits it. They get all romantic and cuddly. A cat scares the ghost and kills the cat, so, so the ghost will stick around. Um, and then it just completely, like, spirals into the ghost telling him that um, his neighbor's family saw her, and now he has to murder the whole family or else she'll never come back. And surprise, he kills the family, and the ghost never returns. Um, the funny thing about this song is I see it as one of three parts. Um, I see In My Room as kind of like the middle story. I see a later song on the album, Angels Falling, as like a sequel, which I'll get into that. But I, I haven't heard anyone else with this theory. I'm interested if anybody else has made this connection. The song Shimmer on Fearless Fred Fury, I think, is a prequel to In My Room. I think, that's the, I think Shimmer is the same ghost that visits Violent J and in my room. And the story of Shimmer is this boy sees this demonic being in his closet every night, like holding like a dead kid and just like chewing on it and pointing at him, telling him he's next. But he faces the demon and overcomes it. And I think in my room is the story of how that same demon convinces Violent J 
to straight up murder this kid and his family is revenge. Like, tell me what you think. I could be way off, but that's just, like, kind of how my mind, like, pieced those two together. So, I'm interested to hear if anybody else agrees, disagrees, what you think about that. Uh, but yeah, like, the song really kind of hits me hard because, you know, with BPD comes abandonment issues. Like I said before, the splitting, the idealization, the devaluation. When you feel something that strong for someone and then you don't hear from them again, it's like when you have BPD, like you grieve, like you mourn that loss like you would if someone died. Like it's it's a horrible feeling and I hate going through that. Um, but like that just hits me hard. Like just you hear Jay's descent into like insanity when the ghost doesn't return because like I can, re I can relate to that. Not from a ghost, but just from people in my life that, that that's happened with unfortunately. So yeah, In My Room is another, like, top grade ICP song. It's a classic. After In My Room, we get Bass Head Attack. You know, the attack of the bass heads. They on a mission. But I don't have a whole lot to say about this song. It's just a funny-ass song about crackheads <laughs> just in, taking over the, the town. Um, it's, just, it's just funny. Like, give it a listen. I think you'll laugh if you... If you hear it, if you never heard it before. After Bass Head Attack, we get into Angels Falling, which, like I said, I feel is the sequel to In My Room. I think um, at this point, Violent Jay's just completely lost his mind, and he's shooting every type of weapon he can to the sky to try to get this ghost to come back to him. Like, I think he literally, like MC Snack said in his analysis, that he literally has gone crazy to the point of hallucinating actual angels falling from the sky as he's shooting, you know, um, guns, throwing harpoons in the sky, spraying mace and everything. I think he actually pictures a bunch of angels falling to earth, hoping that one of them will be the ghost from In My Room. And this song used to make me cry all the time when I listened to it, like, no joke. Like I said before, um... I still feel a certain way when I listen to it because that fear of abandonment that comes with BPD, like I just remember like the horrible feeling. Remember how I said like it's, it feels like mourning, like a death? Well think about it, death is the ultimate abandonment, like that is a sure bona fide way that you will never see or hear from that person again. So I, I can't even imagine, like luckily in my life I haven't lost anyone too close to me. I mean, I've lost my grandparents when I was younger, when, you know, like the, like the sting of death ne never really sank in until I got older. But I can't imagine losing someone you love that dearly, like, through death and just knowing that's it. Like, there's no seeing them again. Like, it's, this song is just such a poetic way to portray that feeling of being abandoned by someone you love. And... Like, it, it, it hits deep. Angels Falling. Check it out. And then Angels Falling goes into Manic Depressive, which is straight up mental illness. Like, they're not even hiding it at this point. And I really think everyone who suffered from a mental illness can relate to this song. It's, um, you know, at some point in your life you felt the exact way that Jay and Shaggy are talking about in the song. You've just completely given up hope. Um, you just feel like nobody cares, nobody's there for you. You don't want to even get up from your chair, you don't even want to get out of bed. And they've just completely given up at this point of the album, which is the last, like, traditional song on the album. I mean, did you really expect a happy ending in hell? No. Uh, the final song is Real Underground Baby, which is pretty much just a celebration of ICP's career up to that point and the, you know, the first six Joker's cards. Just a really fun, like, you know, DJ, like, kind of, like, spin and scratch set, just sampling different choruses and verses from all six Joker's cards and some new uh, chants thrown in, like the classic... Who took the chicken off the plate and put it in the fridge? Shaggy too dope did. So, I mean, just, um, like I said, just a relic <laughs> in ICP history at this point. 18 years, wow. But still a classic that I get down to this day. 
And that's track by track my analysis of Hell's Pit. Very special album to me, like I said. I was just, you know, coming into my own as an adult when this album dropped. And um, it didn't give me a very positive outlook on life, but it did bring me comfort. And I'm um, knowing I wasn't alone in some of the feelings that I was struggling with before I even knew what they were, before I was even diagnosed. This is my therapist right here, Mr. Wraith himself. So, just a very special time for me. Looking back on both Shangri-La and Hell's Pit, just probably my favorite time to be a juggalo in those days. Probably just because those days were like so special to me. Still love being a juggalo. I'll never stop loving it. But, happy 18th birthday to Hell's Pit. Can't believe it's 18. It's old enough to could sign up for the army now. Imagine if we had the wraith on our side. No, no country can mess with this. Uh, but I think that's all I had to say about that for now. Let me know in the comments um, what your favorite Hell's Pit song is. Any memories with the album, and if it strikes a chord with you in the same way it did with me regarding mental health. Uh, thanks again for watching, and also. also don't forget, like, subscribe, ring the bell, all that good stuff. I'm Davey Scorsese, and thanks for watching.